So when's the last time that you actually downloaded an app that had a single page? Either a very, very long time ago or never, right? So that means that navigation is a core fundamental for apps. And what Android Jetpack has provided us is a very simple way to actually implement navigation into our apps, keeping in mind that we want to have things that are going to make our life easier, like type safety. So today we're actually going to be going over Android Jetpack navigation and we're going to be using safe args, which allow us to keep type safety when passing data between fragments or activities. In our case, we're going to be using fragments. So I'm going to use a simple recycler view to display a list of users. And then whenever I tap on one of those users, I'm going to go over to their details section. So let's go ahead and jump right on in. Let's go ahead and start off with a brand new Android X project and an empty activity. Let's set up our dependencies first by going to the project build.gradle file and adding in the safe args plugin. Now in our module build.gradle file, let's go ahead and add the safe args plugin at the top. We're also going to need to work with Java version eight. So I'm going to add that as the compile options as well as the Kotlin options. And we're also going to be using navigation. So let's go ahead and add those into the dependencies and make sure that they are all in sync with the same version. Now that we have our dependencies set up, let's go ahead and start coding some stuff up. Let's go ahead and create a very simple user object that has an ID, a name, and an age. We're also going to want to make sure that it's parcelable so that we can pass it between the two fragments. And then we're gonna also have a description computed property that we can display in our user details fragment. Next, let's go ahead and create a fragment that will be responsible for showing our users. Let's go ahead and use a fragment list that will generate all the boilerplate code for us and get us up and running much faster. And in regards to the configuration, I'm just gonna make sure that everything is named and revolves around the word user and make sure that everything looks correct in regards to using a user object. So now we have a couple of files that were generated for us in our project. We have users fragment, users recycler view adapter, fragment users XML, and fragment users list XML. Let's head over to the users fragment and remove all the boilerplate code that we actually don't need. I'm going to simply keep the on create view and I'm going to add a new list of users that I can control. Then I'm going to pass those users into the users recycler view adapter. Let's also update our users recycler view adapter to take in a list of users instead of a list of dummy objects and replace the verbiage of values with users and update all the different places that are currently using values instead of user. So our users fragment is all set up, but now we need to actually create the user details fragment. We don't need to do anything inside the user details fragment other than just keep the on create view there, which we're gonna be using a little bit later. And the only UI change that we need to do for the user details fragment is simply update it so that the text view is in the center of the screen, just so that it's a little bit sexier. Having it off to the top left just kind of makes me feel weird. That's why. So we have both of our fragments laid out and ready to go. So all we need to do now is create a navigation graph. I'll right click on the res folder and create a new Android resource file. I'm going to call it nav graph and make sure that the resource type is navigation. Then I'll hit OK. So as you can see, we have our empty nav graph and all we need to do now is simply hit the plus icon and add in both of our fragments. I'm going to go ahead and select the users fragment first. And as you'll notice, it's going to have a little home icon next to it, indicating that it's the start place of our nav graph. And then I'm also going to add in our user details fragment. Now I can represent the flow of my app by simply dragging the arrow from the users fragment to the user details fragment. So if we switch our view from design to code, we can actually see the two different fragments that were added. 
along with the action that was added once we dragged the arrow from the users fragment to the user details fragment. So if we switch our view back over to design and we take a look at the destinations panel, we can actually see under host that it says no nav host fragments found. And that's because we haven't set up our main activity to embed a nav host fragment. So let's head over to our activity main.xml file and add in the nav host fragment. And this is a pretty simple task. All we need to do is remove the pre-generated text view that was originally there. And we're going to go ahead and add in a new nav host fragment. Now I wanted to point out that you may run into a warning right here that recommends that you use a fragment container view instead of just a fragment. I am going to continue forward with the fragment because that's what's in the Android documentation, but feel free to update it and use a fragment container view if you feel like it's the right tool for the job. So let's go ahead and head back over to our nav graph. And if we look under the destinations panel, we should now see that our activity main is our host fragment. The last thing that we need to do with our nav graph is specify that we want to pass a user from our users fragment to the user details fragment. We can do this by selecting the user details fragment, going down to arguments, hitting the plus icon, and adding in a new argument. I'll give it a name, user, and the type is going to be custom parcelable. I'm going to select my user type, then I'm going to go to add, and I should notice that my arguments have been updated with a new user argument. If you want to see the different types that you can pass using this approach with safe args, then I recommend that you check out the Android documentation. If we go ahead and build our project, the safe args plugin is going to take effect and it's going to go ahead and generate some files for us. The generated objects inside of these files are going to help us with type safety when we're passing our arguments between fragments. And it's also going to help eliminate the amount of boilerplate code that we have to write when passing and receiving those arguments. So now we need to update our users recycler view adapter along with the view holder. So let's go ahead and make some of these small updates like allowing the view holder to take in a user, which will be nullable, and also making sure that our holder is past a user once it is created. The last update that we need to make to the view holder is adding an on click listener in the initializer. When the holder receives a click, it's going to pass in the selected user into this very long method, which I'm not going to say because it's kind of like a tongue twister, but essentially it's one of the methods that was generated for us by our safe args plugin that is specifically looking for a user type object to be passed in. Once we get that action or these directions, we're going to go ahead and find our nav controller, then pass in those directions into our navigate method. And that will actually use the safe arguments to follow the action, which will take us to our user details fragment. So now we can head back over to our user details fragment, access our arguments, which are going to be of type user details fragment args. And we can initialize that object by using the by keyword and passing nav args. We're also going to create a late init variable called user, which is going to be of type user. And then in our on create view method, we can say user is equal to args dot user, which is really great because we're able to access the dot user property, which gives us that type safety since args is actually of type user details fragment args. And now that we were able to pass our user object safely into our user details fragment and initialize it we're able to use the user object and all of its properties just like normal. So we'll go ahead and put in text view dot text is equal to user dot description in our on view created method. So now if we go ahead and run our app, we can see the list of our users. And whenever I select a user, it takes me to the user details fragment, which then displays the user dot description and it is looking very clean and it's very sweet. 
So there you have it, a very slick way to send data from one fragment to another fragment. And everything looks super clean and sexy, just the way that we like our code, right? So that's gonna be it for today. If you have any other topics that you want covered for Android development, make sure you leave them in the comments down below. And if you like these types of videos, make sure you subscribe. So that's gonna do it for today. Thank you for your time. Now go out there and keep coding passionately.